Anna Eastnin is regarded as the pioneer of 20th century female erotica. Her collections of short stories were equally shocking and sexually liberating. The second collection of stories, Little Birds, has inspired a new Sky Atlantic drama of the same name. I'm Rowan Pelling, former editor of the Erotic Review. I'm going to look at why Nin is such an important figure in the history of feminism, erotica and literature. This is Necessary Lies. The Anais Nin story. You have to try it. It's amazing, Lucy. You have to dance. Come on, come on, Lucy. Sky Atlantic's dramatization of Little Birds is, in a way, a loose interpretation. And it has to be, because you can't really dramatise Nin's work just as it is on the page. She doesn't do beginnings and ends. She doesn't have structure. She doesn't flesh out characters. And so what they've done here is they've taken the atmosphere, the kind of heady, erotic atmosphere, given it a narrative arc. But you have all these little motifs that really refer back to Nin's world. Of course, accepting the dream as a very eloquent expression of our secret self which became a very important part of my life and my work. Very often my novels start with a description of a dream. In her early 20s, Anais gets married to a wealthy banker, Hugo, and as newlyweds, they move to Paris for his work. And this has an extraordinary effect upon them. This is the city of the avant-garde. You've got modernism and symbolism and the surrealists, and you've also got the newly arrived force of psychoanalysis. I always tell young writers that I can't imagine anything more wonderful for them, either to have a love affair or analysis, because it puts you in touch with creativity, and creativity comes from the subconscious. The most famous or infamous of all her love affairs was with Henry Miller. He turned up in Paris, he had this very sexy wife, June, and that, that gave it an extra edge for Anaïs. She liked big in competition with a very beautiful, sexy woman. And suddenly she takes on other lovers. So she starts sleeping with her shrink, René Alondi. She has an affair with a theatre writer called Antonin Artoux, who happens to be gay, but that doesn't stop her. And lastly, and uh, completely most astonishingly, she starts this affair with her own father. She's having sex with everyone. It's really astonishing. I have never read any material that suggests quite the number of lovers and liaisons and experimentation that you find in Nin's writing. Have fun. Anaïs had been married to Hugh since the 1920s. And then when she's 44 and they're living in New York, she gets into a lift and she's immediately attracted by this sensationally handsome man. He's an out-of-work actor called Rupert Pohl and he invites her to go with him right to the other side of the country. And Anaïs being Anaïs, she goes, yes, of course. She marries him. She calls it a bicoastal trapeze. She moves from one husband to the other for the next 11 years. I'll call you when I get there. The thing you have to understand about Annie Nin is that she's an obsessive writer, a compulsive writer. She lives to write, she has to write, and everything is material. And furthermore, you feel that she actually does a lot of what she does, including the sex, so that she has something to write about. As soon as I was able to share the diary, and I was really very much afraid to do that and be, as we all fear, not loved or judged. When I overcame that fear and finally did publish them, then I found myself in complete communion, almost, with with the whole world. What Anna Isnin taught us about honesty is it's a little bit more flexible than we might think. She wasn't really into the black and white of honest and false. She invented a phrase called mensonge vital, which was the necessary lie, which meant that you could tell an untruth if it was necessary, maybe to protect someone, to stop them being hurt, but it was also a little bit more than that. She really believed in, I think, beautiful fabrications to make life more interesting, more exciting, more piquant. She really allowed you to interpret your life 
in a slightly more fantastical way. Break into her You're magnificent. Nin's approach to eroticism was pretty unique because before that you had had women who'd written about sex and they might have been courtesans and diaries, but it wasn't this extraordinary interrogation of self. What I think is very clever in the Sky Atlantic adaptation is this sense that they've really uh, taken Nin's unbounded side, the fact that she was very interested in what people really secretly want, not what they say they want. <laughs> You remind me of someone. She was the freest person I ever knew. It was really fascinating to see how the characters created for the drama reflect Nin's obsessions so well. And so she's got a very virginal wife, played by Juno Temple, as the character is Lucy Savage. And then you have the whore, who is a sex worker in Tangier, Sharifa. For Nin, she's a character so sexual so sensual, so possessed of erotic power that she freezes people there in awe. Marchons, marchons, consang et pur, abreuve à la science. Bravo! Bravo! Nin is so relevant to today's writing. If she was alive today, she'd be like Russell Brand. She'd be a cultural hero with millions of followers on social media. Also, I think what we should remember about Nin is that in contemporary terms, she really braved other people's disapproval. She was taking the brunt of sort of slut shaming before it became something we recognized and really said, no, hang on. Why shouldn't a woman enjoy sex on the same terms as any sexually active man? Really uh, portraying people and trying to portray them so deeply that you went beyond judgment. You don't pass judgment as you portray. You try to find the motivation for everything they do, which is, means acceptance. There are so many contemporary writers who I think owe a debt to Nin, this idea that your life is the inspiration for your work and there's no corner so dirty, so sexually extreme that you can't sort of hang it out as some form of fiction and something that other people relate to. I think Phoebe Waller-Bridge's Fleabag is a very good example. Lena Dunham's Girls, Belle du Jour, Diary of a Cool Girl. It's extraordinary. The 21st century has been about women saying, look, this is how I have sex. This is how I want to live my life. Maybe I don't want to live my life the way my mother, my grandmother did. Anais Newman was doing all this, but she was doing it in the 20s and 30s. When I was marrying you, I thought I could marry a new world. I came to say that we don't have to throw everything away. And you could have lovers even, if that's what you want, discreetly. I'm offering you freedom.